don't know if you can tell it or not, but that is an open window. That one's open. That one's closed. And that one's open. And the reason it's open is because the Daikin unit is broke. When one's broke, that kind of tells me one of two things. Either the wires are crossed or it's low on Freon. So we're going to take the cover off this unit here and put my gauges on it and check and see if it's out of Freon. But as you see, I don't know if you can see down there, but there's three lines that are coming out. So it's a three zone Daikin. Well, as you see from the gauges, zero pounds. I have found a couple leaks already from just being here just a couple minutes. Uh, it's leaking right there. See, I don't know if you can see the oil on my finger, but it's a leak right there. There's a leak right there. And then right here, there's a pretty good size leak right there. And uh, you can see on the, I can see it, I don't know if you can, but on the armor flex right here, see it's darker right here than it is over there. So that's definitely oil. Same thing on this one here. Uh, so a leak, a leak, a leak. So I'm hoping it's just loose and I can just tighten them up. And I'll do a pressure test with nitrogen and uh, see if that doesn't work. I'm going to keep my fingers crossed on it. <laughs> Alright, so I've got my pressure test on there. and I put 202 pounds. I uh, try to get it pretty close to 200. But you see it just, just keeps dropping. So that does tell me there's a leak. And that tells me the guy that put this thing in did not leak check it. So I'm going to spray some bubbles down there at those fittings and see what happens. All right, so I'm hoping you get to hear this. Sounds like bacon sizzling. But it's definitely, definitely got a leak right there. It's just blowing out. So we're gonna see if we can't tighten that up. All right, so I, I found the leak. Um, it would not, I could not get it to, to uh, well, look at that. No wonder it's leaking. Wow. I guess with a broken flare, I guess it would leak. So, I guess I get to make me a new flare. Put it on there and put it on a leak check and see if that works. Cool. Alright, so I got the flare done. <clears throat> um... And so I got it 104.9. I'm going to let it set for a while and see what happens. All right, while I'm waiting on my pressure test, I thought I'd show you what I had to fix the other day. So I fixed this old ream or root or whatever it is. I fixed the braze joint down there. It looked like bubble gum, I'm telling you. Um, fixed that one, and we'll get to that one here in a second. And then I fix this one, the braze joint down there. So, oh, there's another Daikin, look at that. But that one works. Um, so let's go back over to this other one. Oh, and actually, that Daikin right there doesn't work. Hope my friend the Black Snake doesn't come out. When I was here the other night, fixing this one over here, <coughs> I caught out of the corner of my eye something moving it turned out to be a black snake see that hole right there he was actually under the line set so you could barely see him because he was black as the line set um, and I just caught something moving and there he was he had climbed in that hole where the old line set came through so I hope he's gone but uh this will be our next unit we get to work on uh, anyway back to this one here so I came over here the other day and this copper pipe this unit was completely out of Freon this one right here um, so 
I was thinking it was in the coil because I checked his braze joint and there was nothing there. So then I came out here. Uh, came out and got the H10 out. I checked inside the coil. I checked all that stuff before I went upstairs. And I couldn't find anything inside the unit. So, so I started searching. And with the armor flex on, I could pick something up over here. So I was like, what in the world's going on? So... So I, I took the line set off, or the arm reflex off, and this is what I find. Well, you see he kinked it. See that little circle right there? A little black circle. I put that circle there. Every time I got close to that spot right there, my uh, leak detector would go off. And uh, he had a crack. He's got a crack right there. Now I tried to find it with bubbles and could not find it. Uh, that phone call was the uh, Rude distributor, no, the Ream distributor, top leak killer compressor guy. Um, I had to call about the warranty on the coil. It's gonna take them two weeks to get that coil. But anyway, they had to find out if they were gonna honor the warranty. But anyway, so you see the difference? See the difference here? See, I used a tubing bender. I used my whole pipe bender and there you go. And my expander. Oh, and I had to do one up here too for some reason. But I use the expander there. Uh, there you go. So, you can't beat the expander, especially when you have something that looks like this. Alright, so I found Fix the Leak, pulled the vacuum, did a triple evacuation. Uh, what I did is I pulled my, uh, pulled a vacuum down to a thousand microns then I broke the vacuum with nitrogen up to zero pounds then I pulled another vacuum and got it down to about 750 broke my vacuum again with uh, nitrogen till it gets right at zero and then I uh, pulled my vacuum again down to 500 microns that should get me now I'm adding refrigerant to it uh, it takes about six and a half pounds so Hopefully, uh, it doesn't have a dead compressor in it. We'll see. So we are getting there. It turns out the compressor is good. It calls for 6.61 pounds of Freon, or our 410A. We're definitely getting there. So all three units are running on the inside. Now, I only have one port hooked up because I only have one 5 16th adapter. So, um, so that's just the way it is, but we're getting there. All right, so I'm over at the second one now, and I can already pretty much tell we have a leak right here. Um, right there. Maybe one right there. But I got over here before I put my gauge on, pulled the cover off, and the liquid cap was missing. And yes, it is a liquid line. Look, it says liquid. But once it gets past here and gets down and go into the unit, it's now a saturated vapor line because your TXV or your meter device, your TXVs are right here on the outdoor unit. So I'm going to check these. This one may be leaking right there. Um, so I'm going to check these and see what we got. Alright, so I've checked here. I don't have any leak that I can tell with the Bloodhound. The Bloodhound. I've tried bubbles. I pumped it up with nitrogen to uh, about 204. What I did is I capped the, uh, I closed the valves on the unit. And then uh, we had about 59 pounds of uh, standing pressure with 410. So, I closed the valves and I put about 204 pounds of, of nitrogen and 410 so that way I would have some sort of tracer if I had to go inside. Now this is uh, there's actually I believe there's one just on the other side of this wall there's one just on the other side of that wall and then there's another one uh, well, you can follow cover right there. 
So it's just on the other side of that corner right there. I'm going to go into each unit, open the cover, and see if I can't detect it with the leak detector before I start cutting sheetrock. Because the next place is going to be the flare inside the wall. All right, so I found my leak. It's on this little joint right here. I don't know if you can see it right there. But it's for the best, I guess, because when I was out here the other day, I noticed this. Not the shades, but I noticed. See my hand? See my hand in there. So that bracket is barely hanging on the wall. So I get to fix that. Now, here's the sad part about a job like this. The guy that put this thing in is probably out on the lake right about now. It's Friday evening. I don't even know what time it is. And guys like me have to come back behind them because they won't come back and fix their work. This is still in a warranty. They can't get the guy to come back out. Um, I guess he's had his chances to fix it. Couldn't do it. Didn't know how to do it. Guys like him get to get these kind of jobs and get to make a pretty good chunk of change doing it. And then guys like me get to come fix their work. This air handler is hooked up to a three zone Daikin outdoor unit. There's four of them out here. You know, that's a pretty good chunk of change. Plus he set regular outdoor units and coils. We're going to uh, get this fixed. Rehang an air handler. All right, so we got one screw up at the top. That's not attached to anything. No anchor included. Got that one there. And look at this down here. I swear to God, fellas, I did not do that. It was out, bent out like that. Look at that. What kind of dumb stuff? That ain't nothing. That is no man. This is what you got to put in there. Anchor like that. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take this off the wall, level it up. I just love that. All this one person fall off the wall, hit one person in the head. Look, they didn't even put a screw over here up whatsoever. That one's, that one just pulls straight out like that. Kind of dumb stuff is that. So we're going to get started. Get this secured back to the wall. Well, I don't know if you can see the bubbles, but uh, that's where it's leaking. That's where it's leaking. So, but it's probably for the best it was leaking because, see I put a uh, anchor there, an anchor there, an anchor there, one down there, one right there, and one right there. Alright, All right, so I've got my uh, uh, piece of pipe, my old flare in right there, take cut off. I tried to tighten it, I just couldn't do it. You know, got me a new flare made up there. Got my bracket on the wall. See, it ain't going nowhere now. I can hang off. All right, so I got my air handler hung back on the wall. Um, on the Dikens, you see those screws right there. They're, uh, they didn't care enough about putting the screws back in it, so. I use their quarter inch, two inch screws that they left here. So this one's mounted on the wall permanently now. All right, so this one is complete. I still have a small leak somewhere. I've got a, I put about 200 pounds of nitrogen in the system. And so I guess I'm off to uh, one of the two air handlers. And if I can't find it, maybe I'll put some stop leak in it. Hmm. Nah, I don't think so. All right, so I'm in the one in the kitchen. Uh, you see the up there the line set. You climb up on the ladder here. See the line set? How it's not wrapped? Well, if you don't wrap these things, it will sweat. Uh, so you don't care enough to wrap his stuff uh, when these things get running. 
water will be running down the wall. So, uh, and then they'll be calling, hey, it's leaking. And then I'll have to come wrap the line set for them. See, like that one goes through the wall. It's not even wrapped. Numb skulls. All right, we're getting ready to look at that one right there. Seems to be leaking down the wall. I don't think it's a drain issue. I think it is a uh, line set not being wrapped issue, but we will see. All right, so I got the cover off. And it's right there. So I got the cover off and uh, there you go. I think that needs to be wrapped. It's no wonder there's water leaking down the wall. All right, so what I've done is I've taken water, see that measuring cup right there on the table? Taken water and poured right here into the drain pan so it will, uh, so I can see if the drain pan was overflowing. Or this is the same, almost the same exact unit that I, uh, that I changed the back end the other day. You see that right there? Let me show you what it's done. She said that the water was leaking from right here uh, in the corner coming down. So I looked at the back of the cover right there. You can see right there that all that green, that's from it dripping. So what I think is happening is this is uh, running from here down here and dripping out of there. Right there. So I'm gonna let it run for a little bit and see if I don't see where the water's coming from. But I have a good. It's definitely coming. All right. Right All right. I found. I figured out why the uh, uh, drain was overflowing. Why she had a ton of water going down the wall. Uh, here's your drain line right here. Uh, if y'all remember that one where I repaired, took the whole thing apart, and that was broken off. Well, here's your drain line right there. And if you follow it around under this, above that clip, and you see, what does it do? It goes uphill. So it winds up leaving the building higher than when it leaves the unit. So when that fills up, of course, it's going to overflow. So that's why a bunch of water was pouring out of there. But I, while I got this open, I'm still going to wrap that. So, make sure there's no oil there. Wow, the things you see. Alright, so I've got it, uh, see the lines right there. It runs across here. It runs right there. It runs right there. It goes up just a little bit there. There's nothing I can do about that. Right there. And then, uh, it runs down. Now, if you're going to do this with vinyl tubing, I mean, it really shouldn't because it'll kink off eventually like that and then you'll have problems. The best thing to do is since the drain line terminates right here from the air handler, is go right out the outside wall. That's the best thing to do. But, you know, some guys, some guys just want to make it difficult on themselves and do stuff like this. It's best not to. And then of course I've got it all wrapped up right there. So, it's done. And then I put screws back. They forgot to put the screws. Or just didn't put them in. I don't know.